my name is April and I'm the host of today's workshop, Plan a Healthier You in 2020 with the Hobonichi Weeks. Today, I kind of just want to tell you, you know, I'm a huge Hobonichi fan, as some of you guys might know me as Penguins Creative on Instagram. I share my spreads and my love for the Hobonichi there all the time. But today, I wanted to focus on the newer format, which is the Weeks. I feel like the weeks has been super popular for the past two years. A lot of you guys might have it right now in your hands. And you know, I personally love it as well. This year I'm using two weeks. They're kind of this pocket size, unique, portable, slim versions of a daily diary that has all the days and it's condensed into a weekly format, which is hence its name, the weeks. I'm using this one as my work journal and this one specifically is the health journal that I use to keep track of my you know, physical health, mental health, and everything in between that you know, makes up a person, you know, makes up my emotions, my feelings. And that's kind of what I wanted to touch on today because you, know, you might already have a planner that's dedicated to your daily appointments, to your regular life, but have you ever thought about tracking things that are like more intangible, more along your thoughts, your emotions, um, you know, your mental health um, outside of your physical trackings? I found that for me in the past year, two years, in fact, when I'm like stressed out for work, stressed up about my own visa statuses, stressed out about my relationships with people, this sort of tracking and journaling has really been super helpful in letting me, you know, take the time to digest what I'm going through, digest emotions that I'm feeling, put those thoughts into, you know, pen and paper, and then at the end, I'm be I'm able to get a better have a better grip about what I'm dealing with and how to you know react to these emotions within me, and it's all due to you know the habit of health journaling. A few things we're going to cover today in the workshop is one: why journaling or tracking when your planner about your health is important or could be very you know good for you. Two, we'll kind of explore the difference between journaling and with tracking, you know, what's the difference and what's the pros and cons of both. And third, um, I want to show you a little bit about the layouts that I do in my home weeks. And also in collaboration with our sponsor of today's workshop, Everyday Explorers Co. Christine and I have collaborated to create this specific set of stamps that's going to help you do mindfulness tracking tracking about your mental health, tracking about your anxiety. And finally, you know, I want to I want you guys to do a little exercise <laughs> even though I'm not there on how to create, you know, a health self-care bingo in your Hobonichi weeks. Why use a Hobonichi to track your health or, you know, any other plan or journal actually? <laughs> There's lots of reasons. First of all, this week's size is perfect because you get to take with you on the, go, on the go. It's slim, it's portable, you can literally put it in your pocket, and the writing space is limited. That, that's a pro, actually. As you can kind of see here, I use my cousin to write my daily journal, and this is a chunky boy. There's a lot that I can write about my day, and I use it to fill up my cousin. And if I'm using a journal that's like this size to talk about my feelings, it can be kind of big and daunting, which is why the week turns out to be the perfect size. It condenses the whole week into two pages every day. You have this non-intimidating bar each day for you to write about your thoughts, write about your physical health, write about what you're thinking mentally. And I found that to be, you know, a very casual and easy way to get started with the habit of health journaling. And finally, the reason why using a weeks is great as opposed to other planners or as opposed to other blank notebooks is that it's dated. And I found that using a data journal really keeps you accountable on things that you kind of want to observe and explore over time. So reasons why I use a Hobonichi Weeks. I hope those three are like sufficient, but obviously, you know, the appeal of these beautiful covers is 
one more thing that I love about the Hobonichi. I'm personally using the Tokyo Tower cover that is in the silk and tie fabric and I am covering it with like a very nice cover on cover from 2015 that comes with back pockets um, on both sides. So I also want to share with you a quote from the founder of the Hobonichi brand and planner, Shigetsato Itoi. He says, when I spend quality time with my techo, I could feel the life behind it. The techo allows users to record our life as a tangible thing that we can hold on to or pass on to others. And life is a collection of everything that makes us who we truly are. Don't you just love that? And I think with appointments, events, purchases, the things that are tangible in our life, we already have a planner for that. I'm pretty sure you have a planner for that. And today I want to challenge you to take note of the more intangible things that we can capture as words or notes, specifically our health, you know, our emotions, our feelings, and you know, intentions towards things that makes up a large part of who we are. So what does journaling have to do with your health physically? There's many things you can do. First of all, you can track your dietary plans. Do you have any like weight goals you're striving towards? Those are great things to put in your journal or your planner. You can also keep track of medications, keep track of symptoms. You know, for me, I take birth control pills or sometimes I like to write down how many times I take Advil because I don't want to be too dependent on it. You know, all these kind of little things that you know that you do personally regarding your physical health, they can all go into your weeks. I also like to record my workout and exercise routine. And in fact, later I'm gonna show you kind of a spread that I do to track how and well help me keep me accountable for the exercises that I wanted to do, you know, each month. The cool thing about journaling about your health, not just on the physical side, but also on the mental side, is that there's many pros to it. First of all, for me, I think journaling in the weeks is a very healthy way to express yourself. Um, you know, aside from the diary where we can kind of be very um, neutral in terms of tone or in terms of we just want to write down like the things that happen to us but not really touch on and ex explore on the ways that we are reacting to things like for example in a planner I would write today I met up with my friend to go sketching at this cafe at this time but in the health planner I would take on a different perspective and really dig into you know how did I feel when I was meeting up with that friend? What did the environment make me feel? Um, what did I t take away from that encounter? And those are more exploring on a deeper level what you would normally write differently in your planner. And I feel like that's a great way to not only train yourself creatively um, and also help you, you practice thinking critically about things and you know expressing them in different ways. And to be honest, journaling boosts your mood. <laughs> I don't know about you, but whenever I do my journaling or my planning out in cafes or at home, I always just feel so happy because I get to use all the different pens that I own over here. <laughs> the stamp sets, the stickers, all the washi tapes, you know, playing with colorful things that seem very light and very fun. These are all great ways to make ourselves feel better. And sometimes I like to track, you know, how many times I go out cafe journaling, how many times a week that I dedicate for myself to journal and plan. These are all great things to, to write about and keep note of in your weeks. One thing I also find that has been helpful in, for me in terms of health journaling is that it really helps me prioritize and dissect feelings that are sometimes not so happy to think about. For example, fears, concerns, anxiety, struggles. Those are all things that we really don't like putting down to paper or things that brings us down. And you know, some people, me sometimes, I would choose to ignore or not acknowledge it. But what I found out is that down the road, you know, as these thoughts and these negative things gather, they kind of like, 
became a knot inside you and I found that whenever I take that moment to write it down and to kind of like break it out from this like jum jamble ramble jumble thing in my head it kind of starts to make sense I'm starting to be able to look at things on a more neutral or more impartial perspective and that has been really helpful and sometimes you know you know highlighting these thoughts also helps you realize you know what have you been fixating on what have i been so focused on that i can't move on and do other things so a journal is there for you to you know you know kind of like dumping out the trash in, in your mind to help you make sense of what's confusing you and what's holding you back and finally i found that this process and this practice of health journaling really helps you filter through your thoughts better you know you're you're able you're more able to calm through the negatives and the positives and you know it's a healthier way to think about things and a healthier way to view your life when you are able to you know make sense of what's going through your head now are you a tracker or are you a journaler I know some of you might think it's the same thing and I, honestly to me it is kind of like the same thing but I just kind of want to highlight how different it could be and the different styles that you can do when you're considering to do a health planner or a health journal. So with journaling, it tends to be a little bit more long form writing. You have more freedom. There's more freedom to explore your emotions and your thoughts and your feelings. You can still tell stories when you do your health tracking and journaling form. And you're less prone to forgetting the details that you wanted to like focus on or you want to really spell out when you are journaling. What are some pros of tracking? It's very easy to do. You know, it's usually more short form. It's easy to establish a habit because it doesn't take much time to you know write out full sentences. It's easy to just make notes, use dots or use grids or use stickers to do some sort of tracking. You can be very creative with your space, especially with the Hobonichi Weeks, it's so limited. You know, you can incorporate elements of bullet journaling or incorporate elements of drawing charts. And these all become like really fun and creative ways to track what you did or did not do when it comes to like the physical side of your health. You can also visualize progress and progress. You can also visualize progress and growth when you do tracking because you know it's very easy to look at your tracking results on the at a glance. So this is my 2020 Hobonichi weeks. And I want to just quickly take you through the different ways that I track my physical and mental health specifically the types of layout that I use and the pages that I use them for. So first, I want to take you through the monthly pages. The monthly page is actually where I use the most as a tracker. So I use stickers, I use dots to kind of keep track of my weight, keep track of the things I've been doing, keep track of weather. And specifically, you can see here, I write down my weight that I measure myself every Friday. And then I also write down when I take an Advil or like when I have a headache. And on the side, I use a colored dot system to take note and keep track of things that I want to measure how many times I did this month. And eventually I sort of progressed into using these dot stickers, which are really useful. And you can see I track coffee, I track when I read, I track when I have headaches. And moving on, I wanna kind of show you how I divide my way of tracking into two sites on the weeks. So on the left side, on a daily basis, I track my meals. I use BLD, which is breakfast, lunch, and dinner to kind of spell out you know, what I had eaten during the day and this is not necessarily meal planning but just things that I just want to like write down at the end of the day so that at the end of the week or something I can always look back and remember what I had ate. And on the right side of the book this is where I actually go deeper into the more physical and mental part of my health. 
you'll see that I separate the page into two sections using the micron pen and sometimes I use colorful markers to make it pretty. But essentially, I divide the paper up into on the left, the body talks, which is bodily aches, pains, and on the right, emotional thoughts. It's basically a balance between the two important things about your body. You know, you want to always be able to document things that are not going well with your body, what you feel like isn't right. And on the right side with emotional thoughts, that's where you can make conclusions about how you feel during the day. I love to look back and reflect whether I feel happy or whether something gives me stress. Now I want to introduce you to something called the mood spectrum. And essentially, it's a mood tracker. Now you'll see that I have a variety of moods here in this tracker. And what I wanted to talk more about is, you know, how people do mood tracking and sometimes it's just one thing. It's like either you're either happy or you're sad or you're feeling gray. But the thing is with humans, you have a variety of feelings throughout the day from, you know, the negative to the positive. So this is why having a spectrum instead of just picking one mood could be really helpful because you can more accurately document what exactly you have felt throughout the day. And instead, you can see here, I use a check mark to mark um, the specific feelings that I had throughout the day, and it could be a collection. But the overall goal with this kind of tracking is that you kind of can look at it at a, at a glance, and ideally you want all your check marks or your marks to be you know, on the top tier where it's trending towards the positive. But then it's nice to kind of look at which days where you're feeling more down. This is why I said tracking on the visual sense is great because you can see the trend and the pattern. The great thing about the weeks is that there's so many blank pages at the back that you can complement and use together with your daily tracking. And in fact, this is how I started. I got my Hobo Nature Week last year and I actually used the blank pages in the back to experiment how I want my layout to look like. So you can see I kind of drew out what it would look like on a daily basis and experimented with the space and I would absolutely suggest that you can do that too. And in fact, if you have a current way of tracking things on your daily layout and you want to try my method of doing the body talks and emotional thoughts, you can actually draw the layout and you're using the blank pages because there's 69 blank pages at the back. So that could be a great complement to your existing system. And if you have a week's mega, that's even better because Apparently the blank pages are three times as much as the original weeks. So not only can you use my type of layout with tracking the body talks and emotional thoughts along with your daily system, you can also experiment with different layouts that I'm about to share with you here. So now I just want to show you guys a few layouts and templates that I came up with using you know, the week's daily pages and the monthly calendar. So starting with this one, it's a meal planner. So in the month, in the daily boxes, you put down, you know, things you ate or meals you're planning or even when you went out to eat. At the bottom, you can do, make grocery list just as you would use as like a to-do list even. So kind of the most basic way of utilizing the monthly boxes. This next one is kind of uh, upgrade to the previous one. You can use the monthly boxes to track your health. You know, when you have your period, you can have goals at the bottom. But I want to highlight the left sidebar where I use it to make a happy tracker. So I kind of came up with five things that I consider self care items for myself. And then I make dots or like make notes of when that happened to me and over time it became like a visualization of how happy or like the stuff that are like self-care related that I do for myself. This next one is a gym and step tracker that I kind of envision people who track steps using you know Fitbit or anything that they can use. If you want to kind of keep track of how much exercise you did you know throughout the month and on the left side I made it kind of like the exercise goal-oriented checkbox list that you can adapt for your own things. This next one, we're now using the daily pages. You can 
keep track of your steps like I did on the left. You know, save that column on the right to you know write down daily notes about your health. And some of the things I saw that people like to do, like over time, is a visualization of their weight. If you have a specific you know diet goal you're aiming towards, and drawing it out as a graph like this is a very nice way to you know take a look at progress. This next one is the food body emotion log that I just showed you in my own layout. On the left side of the daily pages, I track my meals, and on the right side, I divide the blank space into body talks, into emotional thoughts, so that I can have a good overview of you know my own personal health of an entire day. This one is a workout journal for someone who wants to be more specific about exercise goals. So for each week, you might have different plans on your exercise routine. So you can do this, you know, utilizing the blank note to jot down or log the different kind of exercises you plan to do. And then on the left, you know, write down what how many time you spend a day, you know, dedicated to your health and your exercises. Now I know that some people like to write down moods and feelings, and they actually correlate very well to you know what the weather is like outside. So that's why I kind of designed to separate you know the left side of the page into weather and then your mood and feelings. And on the right side, I like to keep a gratitude log because I feel like that's a great complement to you know counteract the negative feelings or moods you may have, and that is to write down and lock down gratitude. And finally, this is kind of like a combo. I want to log about my mood on the left side, correlating with the exercise amount of exercise, correlated with you know the vitamins that you might be taking. And on the right side, a, a more spacier way to approach gratitude log. And then you know if you want to track water this way is a nice you know creative use of space as well. So all of these are just examples that I came up with. You know using the template. What are fun ways to do this, and you can mix and match on your own. Now, enough with the black and white. I kind of want to show you some more fun and creative, colorful ways of tracking that's out on the internet. So, specifically, this one. This person uses a graph to display her mood, so you can kind of see it going up and down. I thought that was really clever. This girl, she. I like how she decorated each of her day with like a little sticker flake on the leftmost side, and then in it next to it, she would write about her daily to dos and then kind of jogging down her daily log. This is how I would typically like to you know lay out my spread as well with colorful stickers and such. This person she tracks weather. She has a little box on the rightmost that talks about steps, exercise time, kind of like a good. Chart to keep track, and on the left is just her daily to dos, and like she even logs when she watched certain shows. I thought that was really fun. Now this Japanese user, she tracks temperature and weather using the square stamps. As you can see, like she highlights them, and then also on the right she writes about you know nowadays the mask shortages, the toilet paper runs, just kind of things that's related to the health in general in society and for herself as well. And this user, her illustrations are amazing. On the left, she draws everything she ate, which is really cool. And then on the right, she kind of has a horizontal timeline thing going on that kind of documents her day throughout. This person uses the blank pages at the back to write and keep track of daily finances, and I thought that would be another way for you. To you know, have a dedicated space to write about your feelings and thoughts by not encroaching on the space on the weekly basis, but using blank spaces at the end. And this last user, I just want to share her layout is amazing. It's like a mixture of writing, stickers, collages. Every day, it's different, and I love this kind of like freestyle, spontaneous sort of documentation as well. Now, finally, I want to just kind of show you some more fun layouts that I have. For example, this one is the seasonal drinks of 2019. Just you know, when the holiday drinks at Starbucks are out, I kind of want to limit myself to how many I can have, but also have fun filling them out and seeing how frequently I'm drinking those. And this layout specifically is a list that I made to keep track of songs that makes me happy. You know how sometimes do you have like earworms? 
songs you just can't get out of your head. And this is a great way to kind of write them down. And I think at the end of the year, I can kind of look back and feel that nostalgic and reminisce about, you know, songs that I like. And this one was when I had made a plan to think about how I want to go on a diet in a healthy way. So I use a quadrant format to write about, you know, what I want to be accountable for on a daily and a long-term basis, whether it is going to be a habit I want to keep or something I want to control. And on the right side, this is a list of yoga and stretching moves that I want to do on a daily basis. So this notebook is going to be where I can reference all the things related to health um, for me and that I can like, you know, always open to this page and remember what are the poses I wanted to do. So as many of you guys know, Everyday Explorers Co. is the sponsor of this workshop and I actually work together with her to come up with a very special product or collab stamp set for this workshop. And I love using stamps in my weeks as you can see. And my favorite ink pad that I use is Versa Magic Chalk Ink. And these are really, really nice because it doesn't bleed through Tomoe River paper, which is sometimes a hassle for stamp users when they try to use stamps on, you know, Hobonichi paper in general. And these comes in so many different colors and like this little portable size. So I definitely recommend them. So you can see here, I have been using stamps kind of here and there throughout the, my different pages. These little icons are great. And, you know, these inspirational quotes are also great to, you know, decorate the page when you don't use sticker sets. And these acrylic blocks are just kind of the essential thing to, when you are trying to use stamps that are like clear stamps from everyday explorers. So I want to make some recommendations about specific st sets that I really, really love and really fits with the health and like health journaling theme we have here. So let me go through it one by one with you guys. The first set is called On Track and it's got these great, you know, bars and Month daily trackers, you know, there's like buttons. There's also this like Monday to Sunday and I love this weather set and actually I'm just gonna show you right here It fits perfectly within each bar on the daily page So if you want to track weather um, This set actually is perfect and it like fits into each daily bar on the weekly page. This next one is called Working It and I love it because, you know, it's got all these essential elements and icons that is related to exercise and I use that one for meditation. You know, I'm planning to bike to work more so I'm going to be using the bike icon more. And I love that it has like all these essential parts like sets, reps, that you might want to use to make a record or make a plan for your exercise routine. So I love using this one called vision board. It's got so many great phrases and like great sayings that you can use to litter throughout your pages and spreads, you know, feeling thankful, you got this, rise and shine, just great phrases to be in your spread. And I like to kind of use them, you know, throughout kind of decorating it. Um, in between my records and my writings like this because some of them are kind of too big but some of them actually do fit into the horizontal bar so it's kind of just up to you to mix and match and like do a freestyle like I do here. This is called track all the things and I love because it's so functional. It has the basic check boxes you know in the square and circles. It has like the daily he headers and all these little icons that fit into you know this grid these, these check boxes and you can use them intermingly and i love that you know it's got these general ones for headers and a great 31 day calendar for you to track things you want throughout the month i think small victories is a new one and you can see that i've been use, loving it and using it so much especially i took a bath i've been indulging in self-care a lot recently and these are just little badges and like modules that you can use throughout your pages to decorate and it's just a great way to kind of remind yourself these phrases and these sayings 
So now this last one is the baby and the one that I wanted to like debut in this workshop and it's called Mood Tracker. And essentially I created this with mental health in mind. Um, not like the serious kind, but like more just general everyday anxiety, everyday feelings, everyday emotions. And I'm hoping that all of these trackers are essential and can help you throughout. Um, just to show you a few examples of how I would use it. I demonstrated earlier that I keep a mood spectrum tracker. So you can kind of do this on a smaller scale on a weekly basis. So instead of having like a lot of different feelings, you can use this stem on the right side on a blank note and then just kind of track the three main things that you want to, you know, take consideration or to be more, you know, worry about. So for example, if I was to only choose three things to track, I would track whether I'm happy and feeling grateful that day and also productivity, am I productive that day? And then also write down if I'm feeling anxious or stressed that day. Another fun stamp I want to introduce is here. It's called head, body, and heart. And essentially this is a tip and technique that my <laughs> counselor, my therapist has recommended me, you know, whenever I'm dealing with feelings of stress, feeling of anxiety, or feeling worried about things I can't control, using these three things to check in is a great way to take stock of you know, what's happening, what's my head feeling, what's my body feeling like, and then finally in my heart, what do I feel like it's right. So I wanted to really include this technique here in the stamp set and here just kind of like demonstrate what I would write in terms of a head, body, and heart check-in. So this is a great reminder if you want to take three minutes or five minutes at the end of each day to think about things you've been worried or focused on. So a little bit more about this stamp. Here we designed a little Pantone color block that you can use to track your mood. You know, you can color red when you're feeling frustrated. There's like batteries to, to kind of show how, you, how much energy you still have or how much you need to recharge. And just kind of to show you, they all are designed to fit within the week's bars. So you can have that, you know, at the end of your log, you can use the battery to decorate each day or, or show each day your energy level. So I hope that you find all these stamps useful. I'm trying to show you it even fits into the daily boxes as well. And I designed it so I'm going to check in to my battery level every Wednesday and Friday. So I have those marked there. So a few more fun things. There's all these different kinds of trackers, for example, sleep quality, stress level, activity level, happiness level, you know, today I'm feeling okay, feeling not so good. So these are all great little things that you can put inside, you know, the left side of the page, each bar to kind of indicate the level for each day. And I love that we have all these little quotes like big bundle of anxiety, mindful moments, little things that you can put inside your weeks because I feel like it's important sometimes to admit that there are days when you just feel like, you know, you're a big pond of anxiety and you need to acknowledge that and having that stamp set there or write it down is a great way to do that. Mood icons obviously is great. You can use it in the monthly boxes to indicate your mood for the day. If you don't want to use the color, you can have smiley faces. I like these ones that said breathe in, breathe out. And finally, you have these circular ones where you can like label in how you're feeling, how you want to feel did my best. These are all great functional stamps for your everyday tracking. And finally, I want to talk about this. Um, I love these, this little stamp that says I am enough here because I feel like that's been the mantra that I've been saying to myself, you know, during all these times, these political climates, the, the environment, and sometimes you can feel stressed out or like pressured about, you know, people's expectation. And I found that by saying or reminding myself um, I'm enough, it's a great and very powerful way to keep moving on <laughs> with everything that you know you're expected to do or what you're trying to do whether it's work whether it's with your family so i just feel like i love having these things reminding yourself to check in think about what you're thinking think about what you're feeling and i feel like this is the essence of what hobonichi weeks as a health planner has been so helpful for me is to be able to you know do a different kind of journaling do a different kind of tracking than I would in a typical planner. 
And if you're not a stamp user, don't worry. Christine has so kindly designed a set of stickers that you guys can use together with the stamp set if you're not familiar with using stamps. And basically this sticker sheet, you know, condensed and picked out a few key items that you can use. Checking in, I feel, I think, these mood emojis, you know, these quotes I did my best. And I hope you guys enjoy using these as well. All right, so let's put those stamps to good use. First, I take the right side of the page, divide it into two compartments. And on one side, I want it to be a conclusion tracker, you know, using the sleep quality, happiness level, activity level, have a weekly overview. And then I combine the I think I feel into sections so that I do a check-in every other day on the right side. And then using the battery <laughs> icon, you know, I want to do an energy level check-in every other day as well. And I have a mindfulness buddy that I do meditation with, so that's on weekends. And finally, I want to, you know, do the weather correlation. So I'm going to be tracking weather in between the days I check in on my energy level. Then I use the checkbox stamps for my weekly to-do list. And finally, you know, let's put some stickers on this. A little cat here, a little cat there. And, you know, little things, stickers to, to spice up the page. You know, I'm using the I'm Enough stamp. You know, the cat said it <laughs> to me. Just like little fun tidbits that makes me smile. And finally, some washi tapes to brighten up this entire spread and hold it together. And finally, here's an example of a spread that I made with all the different stamp sets to mark my workout routine and goals for March and April in advance. So just kind of demonstrating the fun voice you can use it. Now you might ask me, how do I stay accountable and how do I keep the health journal <laughs> habit? And for me, it's really simple. I set a dedicated time and I always keep it very accessible. It always sits on my desk. So at the end of the night, before I go to sleep, I knew that I have this five to 10 minutes of happy journaling time, happy tracker time to fill in my weeks. And you know, like I said, I don't write about too much. I write about my bodily pains. I write about my emotional thoughts of the day to kind of like have set a conclusion to how I feel that day. I also fill in, you know, the stuff that I ate during the day. So it usually won't take more than five to 10 minutes. And one thing I found that to be very helpful is to always have all tools accessible. So for me, the things that I use in my weeks, I always keep in the back pockets, stickers, the dots that I use to track, you know, having rulers here to make drawing easier. And, you know, obviously all the pens that are just right here at the end of the night, you know, this is an exercise that I actually look forward to and kind of like will remind myself to do. And obviously make it fun, you know, make your spreads colorful, make your spreads really exciting that you are looking forward to do. For example, this week I ate a lot of toast and I was having so much fun putting these toast stickers um, inside my journal. So. These are all just like fun ways to, you know, keep yourself accountable. And obviously the dates help a lot. Um, I would even say, you know, if you want to find a buddy to be accountable for, um, like an accountability buddy, and like, you know, at the end of the week, both of you can check in and see whether you have filled in the, the whole week of your weeks. Finally, let's do a fun exercise. Um, I did it in my own weeks. But I feel like this is something you can do wherever. Um, you can put it in your other planners or, what, or your journals or just a plain notebook if you want to keep track. But this is something that I was like inspired to do after seeing some people's example on Instagram. And I feel like it's a great place to live inside my week. And that is a self-care bingo. Essentially, this is a tracker or a bingo layout that I want to use to kind of remind myself to always um, not forget <laughs> the happy things that you like to do, the things that you consider self-care for yourself and that you want to be able to like make a mark at the end of each month of the year to, to know that you have done something you know for yourself. So this for me took up two spreads. Um, it's a grid of five by five. You can decorate the heading however you like. And then most of all, it keeps tracks of every month. And here I combined um, stickers and colorful markers, stamps, 
and all these to make this self-care bingo really uniquely my own and something that I would look forward to filling out. And so it's very easy. Flip to one of the empty pages in your weeks. Um, it, you can then kind of follow this layout that I have here on the screen. And the most important thing is to think about the things that you consider self-care for yourself. For me, I have saw the cat next door, I have sketched and paint, um, happy mail, cafe journaling, hung out with friends, enjoy the sun, cook something new. So all of these things live inside each of these little boxes. And at the end of each month, you review the self-care bingo and color in the dots or make a note if you had accomplished something that is in this bingo layout. And at the end of the year, you can kind of look at this and you know be happy about the fact that you did take care of yourself, you did something that you really enjoy, and that you know life isn't as stressful as it, theme, as it seems. So, you know, I found this exercise to be a great way to be grateful about the things that's happening in your life, and to also like remind yourself, you know, before the end of the month, have I done this? You know, let's do this. Let's do something fun for myself. And I hope you guys enjoy this workshop and the things I have to share with you. And I'm so excited that you guys are enjoying all of this. Bye!